In this M-Panel tutorial we're going to build a high power sail including the production of panels, reinforcement patches, laser parts and the drawings for the clamp plates. We'll be using some of the newer tools recently released in M-Panel which make this process very fast. The workflow for this project will start by using site layout tool to input dimensions which were taken from the field. We'll then draw a corner mesh, add clamp plates, then we'll relax the sail as a cable edge mesh. We'll then panel a complete mesh, uh, organize the panels, spread them out, then we'll move to compensation, add seam allowances, add rebates, create reinforcement patches and laser parts, stamp the panels and then finally output the panels ready for the plotter. We're going to cover a lot of material in this video so to help you to jump between any of these processes we've added an index of each stage with a video timer in the details below so you can focus on a specific topic. We'll start with the site layout tool. This allows us to manually enter point-to-point -point measurements which have been taken by the installers in the field. Alternatively we could import XYZ coordinates if we're using uh, total station type equipment, survey equipment. In this case we've got a four-sided high power sail with known heights so we'll use the draw four-sided frame tool. In this instance the sail is 10 meters by 10 meters with 2 meter height differences between the high and low connections. The dimensions have been taken by the installers between each of the connection points which in this, ca this case are uh, 10 198 millimeters for the sides and then 14 142 millimeters for the diagonals. The heights are 5500 millimeters and 3500 millimeters. Once we've completed entering the dimensions, we can check the measurements. In this case, with a 0% error, we know the installers have done a great job measuring the site, and we're quite confident we can make a sale to suit this site. Next, we apply the measurements and then using the model builder build the model and then panel will draw a 3D polyline that represents the cell connection points or the tops of the poles for this project. We can view this in top view, front view and rotate it around in 3D Using the model builder, we're going to draw a corner mesh. In this case, we're using a mesh density of 33 by 33. Now, there are help files to help you understand these numbers, but in short, I'm dividing this mesh into four evenly numbered panels. So I've chosen 4 8 to 32 spaces, plus 1 gives me a 33 by 33 grid line. So we click the Model Builder tool and then follow the instructions the bottom left corner here. Uh, in Rhino it's at the top left corner. So following the instructions we click the bottom left, bottom right, top right and top left and then M-Panel builds the mesh. This will be a cable edge mesh so we right click on this tool to select the options. In the settings we're using an edge cable tension ratio of 1.6. This is the equivalent of about an 8% dip span ratio. Uh, again, see the help files for more information on this topic. We select the mesh and the 3D polyline together and relax the sail as a cable edge mesh. M-Panel reports the residual error at the top of the toolbar 
and we're looking for 0 0.0001 or better. Uh, in bigger models you may need to run the tool more than once. We use the tool to delete the old red uh, mesh and we're now left with a smooth relaxed form. We'll just rotate this around in 3D and this is the uh, form finding process. To add corner plates we use the model builder tool add corner plates option. We add the settings for the clamp plate we need for the project and then apply the settings. Then we select the mesh and the 3D polyline together and run the model builder tool. And we can see now clamp plates have been correctly added to each corner in 3D. We right click on the panel complete mesh tool and set the option that we want four panels. We've made a copy of the mesh and clamp plates to the right. We select those and then run the panel a complete mesh tool which will divide the mesh into four panels. And we delete the old red and we can see the panels with the embedded corner clamp plates. We now select the Arrange Panels tool and set the options for a panel spacing horizontal at 1500 millimeters apart. Now we apply this and then run the tool. This will make it much easier to process the panels in subsequent stages. For compensation we once again make a copy of the panels then apply the settings. For this job we use a simple shrink of 1% in warp and weft. We run the compensation tool and you can see the smaller new panels. We delete the old red and then as a final stage I prefer to do a screen capture of the compensation settings just so you have this uh, embedded in the file for future reference should you need to reconstruct the project. Now we add seam allowances and again refer to the help files for more information. We're using normal seams and you can see I'm selecting a seam style of mid PVC. This is simply a way of saving all of these uh, seam settings into the database for simple reuse. So we select the two mid panels and run the seam allowance tool to add these settings. And then remove, delete the old red. We've repeated the process for the other panels, the left and right. And once again, we've made a screen capture copy of these settings for each of the panels for the record. We'll now copy the panels down and then we'll make two further copies off to the right. We'll now select rebates and apply the tool. Select the two outside panels with the corner plates. Uh, run the seam allowance tool and then when we remove the old red you'll see the corners have been truncated off, uh, which is a tremendous amount of work that's been done by the software automatically. We now select the next pair of panels and we're going to add the reinforcement patch tool, apply the tool and run the... it gives me an advisory that there are uh, seam allowances which I accept because that's what I want in this case. Uh, it gives it to me twice and again when I remove the old there are the reinforcement patches to match each of the corners. We repeat the process for the last set of copied panels to create the laser part drawings for the clamp plates. These may need a bit of uh, additional work depending on the style of clamp plates you use.
Next we're going to stamp the panels. So we select the stamp options. We're going to use the simple stamp builder tool. We select all of the panels and run the stamp tool and this will add a panel number to each of the panels in accordance with the uh, panel numbering. Finally we make another copy of the panels and select the output uh, options. Now in this case this is set up for a particular brand of plotter. Uh, the layers are uh, set for this plotter which also requires the output be um, in blocks and inverted. So we select the panels and the Rio patches, run the output tool and you can see after we delete the old panels have now been colored correctly uh, on the on the right layers to suit the particular pro plotter one final comment this video has been extended to explain details however with practice you'll be able to repeat this whole process from start to finish in under five minutes thank you for watching and for more tutorials please subscribe to our channel or go to www.mpanel.com for more information.